Welcome to Conspiracy Corner Podcast, everyone. This is Abe, your host, with my co-host, Lammy Chillmeister. Today is October 5th, 2024. Not gonna lie, I did not want to wake up tonight. I slept, I got home, I ate, and went straight to bed, and slept like a baby till my wife got me up at like 7. And I still, like, am, like, over here, like, like, could sleep. Um, I don't know, I just didn't really sleep much on my day off. I just get, I was dog tired yesterday, man. I have bad sleeping habits, you know, like insomnia and shit. But, um, as far as the update, yeah, just been working, podcasting, that's about it. So, we'll get on with the show. And I think I have enough light I can do, uh, just read from the light I got coming through the car, the street lamps. Um, we were getting into Jacob and Esau, and is Esau a Sasquatch? Um, I brought up, like, Enkidu, the friend of Gilgamesh, being all furry, and there's a theory that he was a Sasquatch. There's a theory that the wild men... Um, there's a wild man archetype, wild man sightings that have been sighted across the world since ancient times. There's a theory that those are Sasquatch also. Um, so I don't know, we're just kind of looking through that lens, you know. We read chapter 25, 26. So this is chapter 27, Isaac's Request. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold now, I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and make me, and take me some venison. So he's hungry and make me savory meat such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt him, hunt for venison and bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord, before the Lord, before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice accordingly to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock, and fetch of me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, at, Ah, Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, is my, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. So there we go. That's the part of the theory of the whole Sasquatch. And I, I know where this story's going. If you've never heard this story, I'm, ne I'm not going to spoil it. Because there are some people who weren't raised Christian like me, so they don't know this story. But Jacob's going to do some shady shit. I'll just tell you that. Uh, my father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched, and brought them to his mother. <clears throat> and his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiments of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob her younger son so basically putting on like 
a fursuit for him um, cuz uh, Isaac's blind so he can't you know he'd have to feel his arms and stuff and be like hmm okay you're furry <laughs> And she put skins of the kids, <coughs> of the goats, upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that my that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, <clears throat> Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son whether thou beest my son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy and his bro as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? He said, I am. And he said, Bring it near me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. <clears throat> and his father Isaac said unto him, Come near me now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. See, this ties in with the whole Sasquatch theory again. The, um, and by the way, there I mean, he could possibly be like a hybrid, like a human slash Sasquatch, which is what he would be, because he came from his mother, who was a human, Rebecca. Um... But they have like a pungent odor. That's one thing you hear classically throughout all these Sasquatch encounters is that they have like a smell they give off. So, therefore God gave thee of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curses thee, and blessed be he that blesses thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end to the, of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also made savory meat, and brought it unto his father, and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless thee. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou comest. And have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with, uh, came with sub subtlety, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, is not he right, rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now hast thou not received a blessing from me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren 
ha have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine, and I have sus sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt you, thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau halted Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand, and I will slay my brother Jacob. So he's wanting to go out and kill Jacob, dude, for stealing his blessing. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, proposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, flee from Laban, my flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran. And tarry with him a few days, until thy brother's fury turn away, until thy brother's anger turn away from there, from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I deprive also of of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do to me? So, <clears throat> chapter 28. And Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padare... Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from hence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So I guess take one of your cousins, incest. I mean, what do you do back then? Like, I don't think there was as many people and stuff, so I think incest was more common and stuff. Um, and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, which they would be first cousins. So, I mean, hopefully the kids wouldn't come out <laughs> too messed up, you know. <clears throat> um, thou, uh, that thou mayest be a multi multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land uh, wherein thou art stranger, uh, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Pandaram, unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and sent him away to Pandaram, um, to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and was gone to Pandaram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went to Esau unto Ishmael, and took unto the wives which he had Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. And Jacob went to, sorry, 
the words are so small in this Bible, man. It is a nice Bible, though. Went to Nebajoth to be his wife. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went forth, went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a <coughs> certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Okay. Now this right here, this is crazy. So this is Jacob's stone pillow. Um, they believe in England, they have this sitting under the throne. And there's a whole ceremony they do where they sit upon the pillow of Jacob, the stone pillow. It's supposed to be a relic, like a holy relic, if it's even true that that's what it is. Um, so I, I wasn't expecting it, but I guess we're kind of getting into uh, some uh, <clears throat> relics and stuff, which is cool. I've done some episodes on relics like the Crown of Thorns, Shroud of Turin. So go check those episodes out. Um, interesting stuff. I love Indiana Jones. I love that type of shit. Um, I believe we've talked about the Holy Grail on this channel a couple times. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. <clears throat> and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land thereon thou, thou liest, and thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and to thee, and in thy seed, all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob wakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is not, this is not, wait, this is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. Bethel, yeah. But the name of that city was called Luz, Luz, at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will bring me, will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I may go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Well, we got time, we'll do one more chapter. But I'm not gonna lie, dude, I kind of feel like Jacob's kind of a piece of shit, dude. Uh, I feel bad for Esau, you know? My little Sasquatch buddy. Um... We'll do one more chapter and then we'll wrap it up. Also, I have actually done <clears throat> quite a few different Bible readings. There should be a playlist on my channel called The Bible. Go check it out. Um, we've covered tons of different stuff from the Bible. So, go check that out. And, um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to do more Bible readings. I would love to do a series on Revelation. That's my favorite probably my favorite book of the Bible. Um, I'd love to get into King Solomon. King Solomon's pretty cool. He's a wizard. Um, 
But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think. We'll read one more chapter and we'll wrap it up. So, chapter 29. Then Jacob went on his journey and came unto the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth and in his place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, uh, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well, and behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither it is time that cattle should be gathered together. Uh, water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, and till they roll the stone from the well's mouth. <clears throat> then, then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, and Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, Laban his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. I guess he's in love. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son and she ran and told her father. And it came to pass, when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him, and embraced him, and kissed him, and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said, un said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. So he lived with him for a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, Shouldest thou therefore serve me not? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Le Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah, Star Wars man, was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy youngest, younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Aw, ain't that cute? And Jacob, uh, oh, and Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Ooh, you know what that means. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. So they got it on. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah, his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said unto Laban, What is this thou hast done to me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. So he gave her, gave him some other chick. Yeah. Uh, Fulfill her week, and we will give this, thee this also for the service, which thou shalt serve with me yet another seven years. And Jacob did so, 
And he's giving him the runaround. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, uh, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served him yet another seven years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Aw. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. Ooh, I love Reuben sandwiches. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction, now that my husband will love me. It's actually a good name, though, Reuben. It's, I don't know, it's, it just sounds cool. It sounds kind of Irish or something. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard I was hated, he hath, give, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name uh, Simeon, and that's a good name too. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him the three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she con conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. And left bearing. So Judah. Dun dun dun. I think we'll wrap it up there though man. Um, what do you guys think? Because I think that's pretty much the whole story. I mean as far as I know. I don't know if Esau ever confronts Jacob again. The brother's requirement. I don't know, it sounds like Esau is kind of hunting him down. He turned into like a bounty hunter. Like, you ever seen uh, Raising Arizona? Do you think he's like that bounty hunter in there? We might have to get back into this. Uh, Esau is popping back up. Yeah, with 400 men. There might be some war shit going on. Between him and Jacob. We might have to do, <laughs> do a part three. <laughs> this story's longer than I, I remember it. I just remember him stealing the birthright and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know, dude. We might have to get back into this one. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me roll down this window because it's fucking hot as hell. Um, let me know what you guys think. Is Esau a Bigfoot? Um, what do you think about that stone, too? And maybe I'll do a whole episode on it. I don't think I've ever covered it. Jacob's pillow, which is, like I said, dude, they do a ceremony over in England with the royalty that they, like, sit upon Jacob's pillow. Um, which, if you think about it, that's almost kind of symbolic within itself, like... I could see taking like Jacob's pillow as a holy relic and then being like, hey, s use this as a pillow for a night, like as like a ceremony. Um, maybe you'll have some cool dreams or something, but to sit upon it, I don't know. That's just kind of like, mm, are they, are the elites doing that to like, kind of like cuck Christianity, aka Judaism? Um, because it is in the Torah. We're still in Genesis, dude. There's so much shit in the Bible, though, that's fucking cool as hell. Um, so here's some episodes I've done of Bible stuff. Like, I, I covered Goliath's sword. So go check that podcast episode out. We talked about David keeping the sword of Goliath. Which is, that's like some Final Fantasy shit. Like, can you imagine little David, probably 5 foot 90 pounds, having this big ass giant sword, like a buster sword? I mean, you can't make this shit up. 
And somewhere out there, Goliath's sword is somewhere. Like, how cool is that, dude? But please like, share, and subscribe, and you all have a good day.